So Apple has just released their public beta of watchOS 10 and with that their new topographic map, which is going to all Apple Watch Series 4 and above, as well as the Apple Watch SE editions and the Apple Watch Ultra, probably in the September time frame. Now watchOS 10 has a ton of new sports and fitness features and I dive into all those up in the corner, but in this video I'm going to go hands on with the beta to show how it works. Now because the version released today is public beta, beta is the most important part there. As such you may see some funky limitations, that's simply part of the beta process. Thus things are going to change. You're going to see the core things that are going to change as I demo this because there's some, some pretty big things missing. But no worries, we're going to dive straight into it. I'm going to tell you where it is now and where it'll probably be down the road. Uh, so I've got my camera here. Sorry, I'm not my normal spot. So here we are on the watch. Uh, this is the watch face, of course. We'll tap into this to access the home screen or basically all the apps are. Uh, and we're going to go into the Apple Maps icon. That's the one with the little arrow right there. Uh, now this is notable because this is not the workouts app. The workouts app is where you normally do hiking and all your workouts. That's a little runner man up there. And you go down and you find your particular workout. That's not what these are. These are in the maps app. So down to there. Uh, and you can see the blue dot where I am right now. And if I zoom in here to where I am, uh, you'll see there's no topo stuff around because this is a, a flat area. Uh, but that's not the only reason why. And I'll explain why in just a second. Instead, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then I'm going to go find uh, some mountain portions. And this over here is where I went hiking and running the other day. Beautiful area. So we'll zoom into this and boom. Now you can see the topo active, the green lines right there. And if I go down further, you can see the actual uh, elevation. So 800 feet and so on. Uh, there we go. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that these lines disappear when we go to gray. Uh, and the reason for this is this is not a parkland. So in the gray area right here, there's no topo stuff at all. Uh, and that's, that's notable because basically if I zoom out here, it's only showing up in any of those green areas. And this area over here uh, along you know, the coastline, this is of course a very hilly area, uh, but none of this will have topo stuff. If I zoom in there, uh, there's no topo data right there. Uh, but there is topo data. And you have to find just the right zoom level, by the way. So you can see, there we go. And this is such a great picture of this, where you can see the topo data there. And then boom, the edge of the park line, no more topo data. Uh, we also do see the trail data, which is kind of cool, as well as the trail names in some cases. Uh, so you can see, there we go, Eagle Rock Trail showing up. Uh, and that's pretty cool. It's not something that's not, uh, not seen necessarily on some of their competitors. For example, Garmin will show all the trail names and road names and all that kind of stuff. But Koros and Sunto will not on their maps. So there are some differentiation there. Uh, now. In this case, we are in the maps, so I'm going to go back here and center myself. And again, I want to reiterate that this is beta, so things will undoubtedly change. I do not know whether or not uh, this will also eventually include uh, non-parklands, but I, I would assume so. I would really hope so, just to be clear, Apple, I, I hope that would be the case. So the next piece, as we zoom out right here, is what I'm going to call the mountain line limitation. Uh, meaning that in order to see the topographic maps as it is today, you largely need to think about where you would be if you were a mountain lion in the state of California. Uh, and the state of California is an important part. And certainly here in California, mountain lions roam in all sorts of places that are not parklands. But this is pretty interesting. So if I go up to the top here right now, I'm going to go on the border between California and Oregon. Find myself, there we are right there. And I'm going to zoom on in. Uh, and you'll see this is all parkland, right? So I have topo maps if I go down here further, further, and we'll eventually hit the point where the the lines will show up. There we go. I can start to see the numbers coming first. They uh, render first. In this case, this portion up here is not cached. Uh, I'll talk about caching in just a second. Uh, so there we go. Uh, and you can see right there, the border between Oregon and uh, California. And Oregon does not have it, and California does. Uh, and the gist of it here is that you have to be in the state of California right, to look at maps in the state of California to see them. Uh, there are some exceptions to this, though. If you go over to Nevada, on the border here, let um, me get down and zoom out a little bit more. So here we are on the border right there. Uh, these ones that spill over into Nevada, uh, they do get to keep their top of line. So there we go. You can start to see them rendering 8,000 uh, yeah, 8, on that side of the border. Go down a bit further. Uh, and these do keep on going. As long as this particular park extends within the borders um, or started within California and goes into Nevada, we're good. But if I choose a different park somewhere else in Nevada that's not part of this one that kind of touches uh, California, then there's, there's no go there. Uh, so right now the rule is uh, in the current developer beta as of today's date on the screen right now, uh, that has to be in the state of California, a parkland, however you want to define that, uh, or going into Nevada from a parkland in California. Uh, and again, all just developer beta stuff. 
Uh, but in case you're trying to figure out why it's not working where you are, that's that's your answer. Oh, hey, and a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting or useful, now's a great time to whack that like button at the bottom there. It really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, let's talk about the offline maps. Uh, the way offline maps work here is they are not on the watch, they are on your phone. So the way that works, you can use the Apple Map app uh, and choose a little profile picture down the corner there, and then choose offline maps. Uh, and then you can choose download new map. You can see right now I've downloaded Palo Alto and then downloaded Mount Hood because I was curious to see if that was causing why I couldn't see things up there, but it didn't work. Uh, I choose download new map. I then can choose my current location or some other random place. Uh, so I can choose my current location here. You can move around what you want and then go ahead and choose download. You can see this is about 1.8 gigs. The section I downloaded earlier on that middle square there uh, is you know roughly like a 400 to 300 megs or so, something like that. So not that big of sizes, uh, given how much range I'm downloading here. Uh, and I note that because I'm surprised these are not on the watch. Given the watch has plenty of storage space uh, for what I would need to download in the area that I could possibly hike to, uh, it's too bad that these have to be on the phone. Anyways, once they're downloaded on the phone, you can access them anytime from the watch, as long as the watch and the phone are within range of each other, uh, regardless of whether or not your phone or your watch has cellular connectivity. So let's get to the next bit that I showed in the keynote, uh, which is navigation. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and back here and go back to the Maps app. Because again, everything here is in the Maps app. It's, it's not anywhere else. It's all in the Maps app. Uh, and I'm going to go back and tap there to get back to my starting point here. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose something to navigate to. Uh, here we go. We're going to choose the Rancho San Antonio Preserve. I'm going to tap that there. And you can see now it's going to bring up this. Uh, and it's going to show six minutes to drive there. I don't want to drive there because I'm not a driving person. I'm gonna go ahead and choose to hike there, or I could choose car. If I choose to hike there, uh, what's gonna happen next is you're gonna see, it'll give me down the bottom here, two different routes. Uh, and note the elevation profile, that little line at the bottom, uh, 900 feet of climbing, and I go down the next one, 1200 feet of climbing. Obviously, we're gonna choose 1200 feet. Uh, and I can tap this, and at this point, it'll give me my turn-by-turn -turn directions to that location. And you heard it on my phone uh, giving those directions as well. Now, what's notable here is which parts you do and do not have to have connectivity for. Uh, so you have to have connectivity to the interwebs uh, for this initial instantiation of those directions. But at this point, it'll save that route is offline going forward. Uh, it'll even save like some of your older points as well. I tried it out with some other points uh, going completely offline with my phone, and that actually worked. But I can't create that initial route. I can't go to somewhere without being on the interwebs. Uh, but once that happens, then it routes. So then you're asking yourself, do I have to go to a trailhead? And the answer to that is no. You don't have to go to a trailhead or a gas station, wherever you want. You can drop a point anywhere you want. So I'm going to go ahead and end this up there in the corner. End this up in the corner and route. Okay. I'm going to zoom out again. And I'm going to choose a trail portion here at the very top of this trail. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose this portion of the trail right there. And then I go down at the bottom and you'll see drop a pin. Uh, and when I do that, I can then tap on that pin there then I can choose the same options as before. Uh, so I can change this up in the corner to be hiking, and now it's gonna get me my hiking directions all the way to there. And if I zoom in here, you can see it is hiking on these trails, right? It's doing that Black Mountain Trail all the way to the top there. Now, those of you that have something like this Epix here or any other Garmin watch or any other watch that has maps on there, know that getting there is only half the battle, right? You wanna get back. And that's the core difference between what Apple's done and what their competitors have done, uh, natively speaking anyways. So Apple is about getting you to that location uh, and it's more about just getting you there. It's not about like the journey, right? Versus if you look at most of the things that have routing and navigation support, they're gonna make a complete loop somewhere. You're gonna get back from the top of that hill there uh, and that's part of the route or part of the course that you want. Today, Apple doesn't have that in their products natively. You would need a third party app like uh, Workout Outdoors, for example, or others to do that kind of complete route. And thus concludes all you need to know about routing and navigation in watchOS 10 as it stands today. I would expect to see changes. I would expect, as I noted earlier on, the California limitation to go away. I would hope that the Parkland limitation goes away. Uh, and maybe I would love to see someday proper routing uh, on a course or a uh, pre-planned route, you know, a complete loop or some sort of unique route as opposed to the point to point directions that it's looking at here. Now, of course, if you wanna see more goodness on watchOS 10 and how it works in the real world, go ahead and hit that subscribe button at the bottom there or hit the like button so that YouTube does its YouTube thing. With that, have a good one.